Well, I, we took off from an aerodrome called Marble Arch, which is in Tripletania, to go inland and see what the enemy were doing way inland. And well, I wasn't briefed to do this, but uh, as we flew over an aerodrome named Hun, and there were aeroplanes parked all the way around it, and uh, obviously they hadn't expected us. So I, even though it wasn't on their itinerary at all, I whipped in for a quick run through. On the first run through, we knocked out quite a lot of aeroplanes, and uh, not a single shot was fired. But I fired at a Savoia 79, and must have been loaded with ammunition, because it went up with a huge blast, and I went right through the middle of the blast at dot feet. Uh, my uh, tail came up, and I was, with a stick back, I was going down, doing it down towards the ground. I remember this all very vividly, and I thought, oh, <laughs> I've, I've had it, but I ca came away. I had a few holes through my aeroplane from the shrapnel from the explosion. Now, normally, we'd only make one run through ever, and uh, because you, you'd alert the enemy, and, <coughs> and you, wouldn't, you, they, you wouldn't be fired at too much. If it came back a second time, you were liable to be done over. But in this case, we went through, and not a single shot was fired at us, except that uh, the explosion, which <laughs> peppered my aeroplane, uh, was not very pleasant. But uh, however, uh, we went back, I was still flying, so we went back and carried out a second attack. And after the second attack, we started getting a, a bit of ground fire. So we, I pulled away and got the boys to form up. We had a new flight lieutenant uh, in the squadron. He was not a, he hadn't done any operations, but being a flight lieutenant, he turned and went in again. I saw him going in. I called up to goodness sake, don't. And th three of my other fellows followed him. Two of them were shot down. I knew it was going to happen. I could see it happening. When I went to, b one of them went in a ball of flame. His name was B. We Chris had nicknamed him Stuga B which we thought was quite appropriate. And he went in a ball of flame, didn't have a chance. And the other one was Rex Bailey, a pilot officer. He force landed, uh, wheels up, and, uh, and uh, I had to look around. I said, ask him what the land or the terrain was like for me to come in and try and pick him up. And he said, I didn't, wouldn't have a chance. He said, leave him. Well, I did find a spot about a mile or so further out from the aerodrome and uh, big enough for me to get down. I put my kitty hawk down, but I touched down very nervously because I wasn't sure if my tires might have been damaged from the blast which you went through. So I was ready to keep going, but uh, they were okay, so I stopped. However, <coughs> then I had a long wait for Bailey t to walk out to me. In the meantime, I got my remaining three aeroplanes patrol overhead, keep on, and make sure no one came out for us. And we weren't fired at from the aerodrome because the guns were probably all uh, set for aiming at aeroplanes in the air, but not on the ground. <coughs> so, however, I was, was nervous as a cat waiting. So I walked, I stepped out the possible runway to get off again, and uh, it was very, very limited. So I th had a long-range tank on, a big drop tank, f half full of petrol. So I dumped that off and had a, a terrifically hard job rolling it out, out of the way from underneath the aeroplane. And I got rid of it, and then I waited for Bailey to come, and I was in a, a complete funk. I was, you know, I thought, well, what the hell have I done this for? But, you know, <laughs> however, I, I felt that I was doing the right thing. Even though it was a court martial offence, I might say, to do this. And when Bailey arrived, he was puffing and panting, he looked rather pleased to have see me, and <laughs> climbed in the cockpit. I, I threw my parachute away. Uh, Bailey got in, I he used him as my parachute, I sat on him, and, on, and took, I revved my motor up fully, uh, to full revs, full, full boost, on standing on the brakes and put a little bit of flap down and when I released the brakes we went surging forward and the end came up the I had put a handkerchief out as a guide so I'd get the longest run possible and I still wasn't quite flying and I was there was a wadi there which is a dry riverbed 
and I they're flown in the, flown into the air, and uh, I hit the opposite bank and really went up again. And in the dust, I thought I saw my port wheel disappearing behind me, rolling behind me. And uh, <coughs> however, I got clear and climbing up. I thought, well, we've been long enough on the ground for the Messerschmitt to be hovering around looking for me. So I, I had my other three pilots flying overhead. I got this pilot, this flight lieutenant, to go and have a look to see if I had lost a wheel. I would just imagine it. He confirmed that I only had one wheel. I, my starboard wheel was still intact. I was quite nervous, quite frightened, because we had there such a long time that uh, we could have easily alerted the, uh, the Messerschmitt boys. However, we weren't, and I thought it would be very, very awkward fighting <laughs> in these conditions. However, when I got near the aerodrome, I called up and got them to have an ambulance ready, and some of them I was going to make a one-wheel landing. And I <coughs> wrote a little note to my poor passenger who was being squashed with my weight, and um, asked him if he minded if I did a one-wheel landing. So he nodded his agreement. <laughs> way there's you couldn't talk to each other with noise of a, a, a big big Allison motor <coughs> <coughs> now the control queried a bit and I so I, I went in crosswind it's a big aerodrome <coughs> big square aerodrome I went in crosswind with the wind on my port side because I had lost my port wheel and I held my wing up as long as I could and then to, I deliberately kicked on a little bit of rudder to throw the weight of the aeroplane out onto the good wheel and I almost came to a stop before it dropped and the damaged the wing tip and the, the uh, uh, flap for slightly. The aeroplane was back in the air a couple of days later with a few little patches in it where the, <laughs> the bullets, had the shrapnel had gone through. So I wasn't caught martial. <laughs> 